Sasageyo, Sasageyo. I run. It's me, Shingeki no Kyojin, Attack of Titans. What will you do? Fight or flight? Hmm. It meant what I said. The whole idea is just irresponsible. So what? It's more grown up to settle for living in fear behind some stupid wall your whole pointless life? Yes. Actually, yes it is. It is indeed more grown up to settle for living in fear behind some stupid walls for your whole pointless life. In fact, it's such a good idea, I'm about to prove it to you. Hello Internet! Welcome to Film Theory! Hello Internet! Welcome to Film Theory! Hi. Be an essential part of a balanced Titan breakfast. <laughs> Man, that's gotta be on the list of top 10 worst ways to go, but it- Eat some bite. Terrific eaten alive deaths like that that got me to include Attack on Titan as a part of my October weenie theory lineup. Weenie theories. Theories about Halloweeny things. Scary stuff. And don't have a crouton, all you salad finger fans. Part two is happening, it just needed a little bit more time to get dressed. Salad fingers get dressed. YouTube comedy gold. <laughs> YouTube comedy gold. Salad dressing, I get it, I get it, I get it. Salad dressing. Right there, ladies and gentlemen. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Attack on Titan, it's all about a society that builds a huge wall around itself to keep out the unwanted. I will build the greatest wall that you've ever seen. Huh, looks like Trump's got some competition. Maybe this whole show depicts America's future. Yep, this is definitely did not itch well. Mm-hmm. Hashtag theory for another day. Anyway, instead of building walls to keep out illegal immigrants, Titan's walls are meant to keep out man-eating giants. You see, about a hundred years ago, under mysterious circumstances, giants called Titans suddenly appeared and started eating every single puny human in their sight. Like me devouring a handful of crispy M&Ms. Hmm, so crunchy. The remnants of humanity fled, retreating into a fortress protected by three huge walls. The outermost wall was named Wall Maria, the second, Wall Rosa, and the inner most wall, Wall Cena. The poor live between Maria and Rosa, while the rich live in the innermost wall, Wall Cena. Much like these walls, and onions, and ogres, the series itself has many layers. Where do the titans actually come from? Why do they eat humans? And why do they always look like they're taking the worst yearbook photo ever? <laughs> now, I already know that a lot of these mysteries have been answered in the manga, but in the anime, none have yet to be revealed. No, it has been revealed! Okay, okay, um, having said that, this video came out in the year 2017. So, let's see how much MacPack fails at it, alright? <laughs> let's give it a bad fear of a lot. Let's give it a bad fear of a And by the creator's own admission, much of the upcoming season 2 will be a complete departure from the source <laughs> material. So for this episode, I'll be focusing exclusively on the anime to answer the single greatest attack on Titan mystery of them all. With man-eating giants roaming the outside world, what's the best way to survive? Do you go outside the walls facing certain death and try to reclaim Earth for humanity? Or do you just hunker down inside the walls, safe but trapped like animals? Like the show says, Home. Oh was a pen. Humanity. Cattle. Honestly, it's a dilemma. That really hurts. Home was a pen. Humanity was a cattle. AKA, you are the farm animal. You do have freedom. Emma that's on every character's mind in the series. As early as the first episode, we see the show's hero Kirito, Sorry, I mean Aaron. American voice actors get me all confused. Fight with his mother over which option is the right choice. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're gonna make the fan base super mad about it, you know? So what? It's more grown up to settle for living in fear behind some stupid wall your whole pointless life? Then a couple minutes later, his mother gets eaten like popcorn shrimp, putting that argument to bed pretty quickly. But it begs the question, which option is best? Are Aaron and the rest of the show's heroes fools to risk their lives outside of the walls when they get- Do do somersault versus men in- <laughs> So just lay back inside the walls and chill? Hashtag wall and chill? Now, I already know what you're thinking. Why is he using the American voice dubbing? It sucks. 
What are you saying? After everything we saw that day? After what happened to my mom? And I'm so triggered about that Kirito joke. SEO is like the cancer of anime and American voice dubbing still sucks. Okay, okay. Let's all calm down there. Come on. You're being very on dude. People listen to these videos, so I gotta make sure that the important quotes are in English and not subbed, alright? And regarding the SAO hate, whether you love it or you hate it, there's one thing that we can all agree on. At least it's not Skelter Heaven. <laughs> Can we all just Okay! Okay! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's using that reference. Just mm -hmm. get along and appreciate that we all have different nerdy tastes. <laughs> Alright. Just thought I'd ask. All right, <laughs> tongue-in-cheek rebuttals against hardcore anime fans aside, back to Titan. Because I'm sure many of you might be thinking that nobody can relax inside the walls because the colossal Titan or armored Titan could just appear randomly and break the walls down as they do in the first two episodes. <gasps> Except that's not quite true. Notice that these Titans only take down the segment of wall featuring the gateway in and out of that part of the city. As we learn in episode 24, the walls themselves are hardened. Too strong for the Titans to tear apart for reasons I'll leave a mystery due to spoilers. Suffice it to say, only the entrance is weak enough. But if humanity closed up shop and completely walled these segments up as well, the colossal titan could huff and puff all he wanted, but he wouldn't be able to tear down that wall. <sighs> Mr. Gorbachev, he is not. But of course, that would also mean that humanity <laughs> would be cut off from the outside world. So the question is, would that be such a bad thing? Could humanity closed within the walls actually survive? Well, to properly answer that, we need to know just how large the remaining population within the walls is and how much land we have to work with. So at the opening of the series, Titans penetrate the wall Maria, killing 10,000 people. Those that survive the attack flee into the wall Rosa, seeking shelter. However, as we hear in episode 2, 250,000 of those survivors were sent right back out into the Titan-infested area. The narrator reveals that 250,000 people count as 20% of the surviving population. Which means that there are 1,250,000 50,000 people living between all three walls at the start of the series. Of the 250,000 people that got sent back out, only about 100 survived. So at the start of the series, the human population is about 990,100 people. Now to live with three gigantic walls cut off from the rest of the world, we'll need enough space for that population to live. Lucky for us, there are a number of good looks at housing throughout Attack on Titan. Within the city areas, sure, the houses are built right next to each other, with narrow roads and alleys in between, but they're pretty darn spacious. They're a far cry from your average LA hipster house or New York studio apartment, so it doesn't seem like they're hurting for a lot of space. To make sure, I wasn't able to take exact measurements, but I did the next best thing, comparison shopping. You see, the cities within Attack on Titan closely resemble the real-world city of Nordlingen, Germany, a town constructed entirely inside a meteor crater. It's cool, Ooh. right? Houses are built right next to each other with narrow roads and alleyways. And seriously, just compare the anime houses to those IRL. It's uncanny how similar they are. So I looked into local available house listings in that area and found that the median house there is about 1,500 square feet. So assuming that people are arranged in families of four, some people are sharing homes since times are hard, and that ever-present couch-surfing, rent-bumming, freeloader friend that everyone has, even when you're in the middle of the apocalypse, the population of 990,100 people would need somewhere around 247,525 homes to sustain them all. Now, if each house house covers a baseline 1,500 square feet, that means we need an area of 371,287,500 square feet at an absolute minimum. To factor in things like roads, streets, alleys, markets, and businesses, I'm going to quadruple that number to give us a realistic amount of space for the city population, giving us the grand total of 1,485,150,000 square feet, about 34,000 acres or 138 kilometers squared. How oh. big is that? Well, that's the size of 20,000 soccer fields. For comparison, Los Angeles is 10 times that size, at 1,300 square kilometers. So about a million people don't need as much land as you might think. But then again, they're being tightly squeezed into this area between the walls, right? Wrong. We're shown through diagrams as early as the first episode the actual measurements of the walled city. And when you do the math, it's actually 
huge. From Wall Maria to Wall Rosa, there's a distance of 100 kilometers. Between Wall Rosa and Wall Cena, there's a distance of 130 kilometers. And from Wall Cena to the center of it all, a distance of 250 kilometers. Now, I'm gonna eliminate this huge piece of land between Wall Maria and Wall Rosa because Titans have taken it over. But given that the walls are constructed in a circular manner, we can use the formula for the area of a circle to figure out what sort of space we're working with within the other two walls. In other words, it's time to make Miss Allen my ninth grade math teacher proud. This one's for you. Pi R squared! Considering the area of a circle is pi R squared and the radius of Wall Cena is 250 kilometers, the area within Wall Cena alone is 196,000 kilometers squared. That's a land area larger than, no joke, over half the countries in the world. Full <laughs> countries! Adding in Wall I know it's bigger than Singapore, of course, definitely Singapore is a small resort, but seriously, Rose's that's a lot. extra 130 kilometer radius, you get a grand total space of 454,000 square kilometers. For reference, this is roughly the equivalent area of Sweden, wow. which, by the way, has a Hi, population of over 9 million. And it's over 9,000! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One more time, then. Show me 9 million. It's over 9 million! <laughs> PewDiePie! Bro -fies. We only need it for 1 million people. Based on what we watch in the show, we assume that living between the walls means making a bunch of sacrifices, but that couldn't be further from the truth. You literally have a population density of about two people for every square kilometer. That is less than literally any other place in the world except for Antarctica. Seriously, the Titans could be wandering their stupid little faces off for weeks without finding a single person to chomp on. And speaking of chomping, what about food? As we see throughout Attack on Titan, land isn't the problem, it's food that's constantly running short. The most basic meal military volunteers eat consists of a piece of bread, a sliver of meat, a bowl of bean soup, and, of course, potatoes. Warm, delicious potatoes that need shelter in your stomach. And what is that you're clutching in your right hand? A steamed potato! It sat there in the mess hall begging to be eaten! So I gave it shelter in my stomach, sir. Sasha, saving the world's U-less tubers one potato at a time. Ah. Gosh, I miss her. I miss the character called Sasha. She was... In fact, to promote the opening of an Attack on Titan amusement park ride, producers sent press this exact meal. And of course, growing food takes extra land. So, per the Food and Agricultural Organization, quote, the minimum amount of agricultural land necessary for sustainable food security is half of a hectare per person. Who knows how much a hectare is? It converts to 0 .005 square kilometers, or 1.2 acres per person per year. This okay. means to support the entire population of 990,100 people, People, you'll need an additional area of 4,950 and a half square kilometers. Compare that to the total amount of area within the wall, and we still, still have more than enough space to grow crops for the entire population, and then some. But the challenges keep coming, since, as we discover in the second episode, a lot of the space is actually a wasteland unable to grow crops. Oh, the show is trying to get me to force these kids outside of the walls so hard! Unfortunately, it's it's never shown how much area this wasteland takes up, but if you adhere to the two most prevalent theories about where this story takes place, it's either in Germany or North America. And based on that information, we can calculate the percentage of farmable land, which in Germany is 34.1% and in North America is 11%. So let's take the absolute worst case scenario and- Alright, let's take the worst case scenario of 11%. Very low, right? that only 10% of the available area within the walls What, you're even going lower than the 11, 10? ...be used to cultivate crops and livestock. That still leaves us with about 45,000 square kilometers, nearly 10 times more than we need for the current population. In fact, with that amount of farmable land, you could sustain a population close to 9 million people. Go figure, it's the population of Sweden again. Does anyone actually take I see that. the time to look into the possibility that this show actually takes place in Sweden? Pewds, you're Swedish. Give us the lowdown. Tack on Titan. Remind you of your home at all? Giant Mr. Goodbody is wandering around invading your Swiss chalets? I don't know. Long story short, there's more than enough space just within the inner two walls to both feed and house the surviving humans, even if 90% of the land is completely useless. I'm just thinking now, if the city itself is so big and it's 
considered a small city residing on Paradise Island. How big is Paradise Island? <laughs> Like seriously, how big is Paradise Island? It's farming. Which brings us last, but certainly not least, to repopulation. The old bow chicka bow wow. Fire up some Barry White because the human race has to resurge somehow. I mean, it'll be pretty gross considering everyone will reek of bean soup. <laughs> According to census data, populations tend to grow at about 1.1% per year. Which means if we plug in a basic exponential growth calculator, we can determine that the population of 990,100 people won't hit 9 million for another 200 years. But understandable, understandable, 1.1% is decreasing and decreasing a lot more. Especially when people start being, um, when people start going to cities and work-life balance such becoming a major issue other than family planning right instead of repopulating they were more towards um their own personal life in which come on the literal existence is in crisis Let's not be selfish, alright? So even if only one-tenth of the available land was farmable, the walls would still be able to support its population for another 200 years at least. So yeah, Aaron, Mikasa, Jean, and Armin may be intent on going out and risking their lives amongst the giants, fighting the losing battle of reclaiming their land one neck nape at a time, but they really should have listened well, to this it. guy. All of it amounts to nothing! Or Aaron's mom. The whole idea is just irresponsible. They have at least 200 years before they even need to consider the possibility of leaving the wall. Or they can just ah, and every become everybody become a. So it's the smartest play. Spoilers, sorry. Is to Spoilers. simply seal yourself in and relax. Hashtag wall and chill. Proof that sometimes being lazy is mathematically the correct choice. <laughs> but hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Now that the theory's done, real talk here for a minute. Attack on Titan is so, so bizarre. And I mean that in the best way possible. I mean, where else can you have a series about future humans living in walled off cities? is trying to fight against giant humanoid monsters. And that is what I love about anime. Sure, some of the subject matter can be, um, questionable at times, but anime tells some of the most unique, mm. off-the-wall, moving, exciting, and generally fascinating stories out there. It's unlike any other storytelling medium. And that's why I encourage you to check out Crunchyroll. Because if you're a hardcore fan, or even just casually curious about the whole genre like I was to begin with, Crunchyroll offers the largest, most diverse collection of anime out there, including, of course, the episode of the day, Attack on Titan. Just in time for that long-awaited season two to come out, by the way. Speaking of follow-ups, remember my Full Metal Alchemist episode a few months ago? Well, Crunchyroll just got its sister series, sister series, it's like sister location, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, so we can see if the guy's math is better the second time around. And personally, out of their new fall lineup, I'm most excited about Cowboy Bebop. I caught a few episodes of it back in the Toonami days and thought it was a super interesting series. Series. It's this beautiful noir detective piece, but I was never able to catch up on the whole series. But now finally I can. And guess what? You can too. Because of this exclusive offer where you can try out their premium service, Crunchyroll Premium, for 30 days absolutely free by using the link crunchyroll.com slash film theorist. That means unlimited anime, ad free, and HD across practically any electronic you can possibly own, with new episodes airing as soon as one hour after they first air in Japan. It's a crazy good service. Service, and some of the proceeds of each premium membership even go back to the original creators of the anime in the first place, which is just awesome. So go back, binge some Attack on Titan and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and see how my theories stack up by getting your 30 days of ad-free HD anime by going to crunchyroll.com slash film theorist, F-I-L-M-T-H-E-O-R-I-S-T, or click the link in the description. It's actually probably a lot easier than trying to spell out film theorist. Theorist is a really hard word, by the way. Way. Anyway, click the link in the description, attempt typing it into your URL bar, and away! You'll be glad that you did. Thank you so much for being so supportive, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much. I hope that you find this video very educational and very special, unique, quite interesting to watch, isn't it? If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and comment down below if you have any share of us. Don't forget to follow my channel, and I sincerely appreciate all the support and encouragement for my work. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you in my next video. But hey, that's just a theory. 
a film theory and cut. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you. don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Sincerely grateful and appreciative.